Hi everyone, and welcome to episode 4 of ARM Template Masterclass. This week we're going to be taking a look at functions. Functions are part of the ARM language that allow you to use some logical operations and expressions within your template. They are built-in parts of the language that allow you to do things like concatenate strings, add numbers, all the way through to more complex operations like merging arrays. Functions are vital to building reusable templates without requiring you to hard code all of your values and logic directly in the parameters and variables you pass into your template. So let's take a very simple example of where this is the case. If you're building a very large template, you don't really want to have to name every single resource and pass that in as a parameter to your template. If you're having a lot of resources, that's going to take an awful lot of time and anyone who's using the template is going to struggle to fill in all those values. Instead, a common approach is to use a prefix that you define, which is used as part of the name for any resource, and then append that onto something like the resource type or uh, some sort of regional identifier or so on. Now, this would be impossible to achieve without functions, but because we have the concatenate function, which is a very simple function, but it allows us to join two strings together, we can now pass in a parameter for our prefix and concatenate that with a hard-coded string that denotes the type of resource or the region of the resource and so on to make your naming convention. This simple concatenate function has allowed us to make our template more generic and easy to use by just having to pass in one prefix rather than every resource name. And you'll find that there are lots of functions that are very useful and that you use every time you write a template. So let's have a look at how they work. Functions are something you define as part of your template inside the JSON code. And so usually you will have a function where you're going to run this function and whatever the output of that function is will be then put in place of a parameter value or a variable or similar. And so this is what a function declaration looks like inside your template. And you see we've actually used these before. So in the previous video, when we use the parameter and variables options to actually get those parameters and variables into our template, that was a function. Function sits inside quotes and then inside a set of square braces. As I mentioned in the last video, square braces denote something that needs to be interpolated. It is not just a plain string, it is something like a function where you need to interpolate the result and put that inside your template. Inside the square brackets, we're gonna put our function name, whatever that is, and that's defined by the spec of that function, and then open a set of brackets, and inside the brackets will go any parameters that the function takes. And these could be anything. These are defined by the actual function itself, and you can have one parameter or any number of parameter. If you take the concatenate function, for example, you can pass in as many parameters as you need to be able to stick them all together. Parameters are separated using a comma, and you can have a parameter being another function. So you can nest functions together, and we'll see that in use in a little bit when we, when we use them. It's quite common to use multiple functions together to do whatever you need to do. There are lots of functions available for you to use. We're not going to go through every single one here, and so I would strongly recommend that you spend a little bit of time to go and have a look at the documentation on functions and get to know some of them and understand ones that are going to be useful for you. Um, and when you become across a particular problem in your template that you're trying to write, it's often quite useful to go back and look at the function documentation to see if there's something that could help you. But broadly, functions fall into one of these categories. So we have numeric functions that allow you to do mathematical operations like add, subtract, divide, modulus, those sort of things. We have string functions, which allow you to do operations on strings like concatenate, split, trim, and so on. We have a couple of date functions, and these are fairly new. They allow you to generate some of the current UTC time or add time onto an existing time. Resources are a special set of functions that refer to Azure resources. So you can do things like get the resource group or the subscription that you're deploying to, which can be quite useful for a number of things. Deployment functions are mainly around what we talked about last week, that is parameters and variables. We have comparison operators, which are things like equals, greater than, less than, and so on. We've got logical functions, which allow us to do things like ands, ors, not, and if, which we'll cover in a future video about doing uh, conditional logic. And then finally, we've got array functions, which allow us to do operations on arrays like merging, getting the length of an array, taking values out of an array, and so on. As I say, those don't cover all of the functions available, 
Um, so I really would recommend you go and have a look at the documentation and familiarize with those so you can use them in the future. If you want to try out some of these functions to learn how they work, one of the easiest ways to do that is to actually use an ARM template and use the output section. We've not talked about outputs before much, but the output section allows you to define things that are output from the template when it runs. So what we can do is we can define outputs using functions. Then the results of those functions will be displayed on our screen when we run the template. We don't have to do anything in the template in terms of deploying resources. We can just use the output section to put together some functions and see what comes out the other end. So we've got an empty skeleton of a template here. Let's go down into the output section. And if we type arm-output, we'll get the snippet for doing outputs. And it's very simple. All you have is a name, so in this case, output1. The type you need to define, so string, integer, object, so on. And then the value. And this is where we'll use our functions to define a value. So let's start with something really simple. We'll just do a quick concatenate of two strings together to see how that works. So we're going to put our square braces and then the function name, which is concat. Open the brackets. And then in here, we will put our strings we want to stick together as parameters. So we'll just do two different ones here. You can have any number of parameters in the concatenate function. You just separate them with a comma. So we'll put these two strings in, and that's all we need to do. We've got our first function ready to go. So go over to the terminal, and we'll just run this very quickly using the same command, the new AZ resource group deployment command. We do still need to define a resource group to deploy against, and it does need to exist. However, we're not going to put anything in that resource group, so it can just be an empty resource group. So we'll run that, and it'll take a minute. And when it comes back, you can see We've got the output section displayed, and it gives us our one output there, which is output one, and the value, which is those two strings stuck together. If we go back to the template, we'll do a couple more things to make it a little bit more complicated. So first, in our output one section, we're going to use a function within a function. So for our second string that we're concatenating, we're actually going to put this all into uppercase, so we can use the to upper function and we're just going to put that inside the concatenate function. And so the two upper will be run first, and then the concatenate will be run. We're also going to create a second output value called output2. And in the value here, we're going to use the subscription function. And this goes and gets the current subscription. And this is an object, so we can now then go and look at a particular parameter. And if we press the period key here, you'll see that Visual Studio Code actually has some IntelliSense around this. It understands this object. And so it gives us the options that we can add. And in this case, we're going to pick the display name. We'll go ahead and run that again in the terminal. And you can see from the output that both of those strings are doing what we expect. We've now got a concatenated string with the second half being in uppercase, and we're getting the subscription name. And so you can use this technique to try out as many of the functions you want, get familiar with them, see what they do, and then you can start using them in your actual templates, which is what we'll have a look at next. So here we're back in our template from last week, so we're creating our storage account, and we're going to amend this to use a function. Now, before we do that, just want to highlight we are already using a few functions in here. So we've got the parameters and the values functions we used last week, but if we have a look in the location property, you can see we're also using another one here called resource group. This, like the subscription one we used in the previous example, will go and fetch the resource group information. And it's an object, and we can pull out various different things. In the case here, we're pulling out location. And this is a pretty useful tool because we can use this rather than passing in a location name. And what it means is that the resources will always be deployed in the same location as the resource group. So if that's something you're going to do, then this is a nice, easy way to do that and avoid having to put in the location every time. We're going to go ahead now and use a function to help us create the storage account name. As you might know, storage account names have to be globally unique. So you cannot have the same name as another storage account in the entirety of Azure. They also have a few other naming conventions that they have to be lowercase, they have to be less than a certain amount of letters and so on. So we're going to use a function here to help us create a storage account name that's acceptable. If you remember from last time, we're already using the parameters function to get the storage account name we're passing in. So we've already got that configured. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up a concatenate using that parameter name as the first parameter. And then for the second parameter, we're going to use a function called unique string. Unique string does, as the name suggests, generates a unique string. But it doesn't just pick a random string. What you actually do when you create the unique string function is you pass in a value it uses for its seed. 
And so as long as you pass in the same value each time, you will get the same unique string back again. So we're going to pass in the resource group ID using the resource group function. And so if we deploy this template in the same resource group, we will get the same string back. If we put it in a different resource group, we will get a different string back. And so what that allows us to do is generate a string that's unique for a specific resource group. And then we're using concatenate to add that to our parameter to form part of the storage account name, which will hopefully give us a unique name across all of the jour. The final criteria is that it all has to be lowercase. So we're going to wrap everything else in the to lower function that will ensure everything is lowercase. And here we have our name of our storage account being generated using these functions. You can see you can quite quickly get quite complex when you're stringing lots of functions together. That's something to be aware of um, and to think about. There are some things we can do around that that we'll talk about later, but for now you need to be conscious of how difficult it makes your template to read if you start stringing lots and lots of things together. We'll just copy and paste that into the tag name as well. And then I've gone ahead and deployed that. So if we have a look in the Azure portal, we'll see that we've got this storage account now created with this naming convention that we've generated using these functions. And there you have how functions work. We haven't had time today to cover every single function, so I do really recommend you go have a look at the documentation, play about with some of the functions, see what they do, and see how you can use them in your templates to do interesting and helpful things. Next week, we're going to have a look at creating a more complicated template when we try and deploy a virtual machine for the first time. If you've got any questions or queries about this week's episode, please feel free to put them in the question section. If not, hopefully I'll see you next time on ARM Template Masterclass. Have a great rest of your day.